Hey everybody, welcome back to the Metal Mill 52 workshop. My name is Bill, this is my shop. We're building an LBSC Titch locomotive. This is the book. And here's the project itself. In this week's episode, it'll be a little bit shorter than some of my other episodes. We'll be covering making the footboards here, or foot footboards or running boards, they're often referred to in the US. And you'll see that I used a unique combination of pieces of metal to make them and I ended up adding a little extra weight to the chassis and I'm pretty pleased with how they came out. It's kind of a neat aerial view of both of them. So the next thing to uh, to be made will be the tanks. I'll, be, I'll make those out of brass and I appreciate everybody being a part of the channel. Please ask any questions if you have any or if you don't mind give me a thumbs up. It always it encourages me, it, it lets me know people are watching, so I always love to see those thumbs up. Um, and please help pass the word, because I'm trying to grow the channel. Thanks everybody, see you on the next one. Alright, next thing to do to make the uh, for the titch is the running boards. I've got some 70,000 steel that I've had for quite a while, it got rusty, I'm going to have to clean it up. But I've got it laid out, you can see... Just a, a sixteenth overhang, or thereabouts, maybe a little bit more on each end. And the width looks appropriate, so I'll see if I can cut it out using those electric shears that I have. Next thing I need to make, now that I've got the running boards cut out for the titch, I've got the valences I need to make too. And as you can see here, I'm, I'm going to make them out of this bed frame material, which is almost an eighth of an inch thick. And I'm going to leave a lot of this material in place here. And the reason is to raise the running board up over the cylinder, the steam cylinder covers. Um, I'll explain that at a later date. But for now, I'm just going to cut out this uh, this pretty much as I've laid it out. And then the kind of the important point is that the valences will be part of the same material. So the running boards will be laying on top like this and the running board and the valences will be basically connected. Sort of the same material. I've been away for a while but I made some progress tonight. What I've did, I'll, let me peel away, I'll show you. So it looks like an ordinary running board. I did cut the notch out there for the little engine mount thing. I've just marked some area to trim away on the underneath portion. And so instead of making the valences out of this very thin, lightweight copper stuff, which a brass angle that I do have, I decided to use the steel bed frames after all. And it, reason I did one of the reasons I did it anyway was that my um, cylinder covers stuck up so high I needed a spacer in between here anyway. Also needed a valence. So I thought, you know, I could use the bed frame material, as you can see, I'll flip it up here, for that purpose. The other nice thing about this, this is pretty heavy stuff, probably six or eight ounces just for this piece. Of steel and the guy that I bought the set of parts from originally he had run titch locomotives many times back in the 70s and all the way to the present day and he said if you can put a sneak an extra four pounds of weight on the wheels somehow then you'll have a better runner so I thought hey this is a great opportunity to put that I'm using the thick steel plates the uh, thick steel underneath portions and I just when I cut out I had to make a little relief here for the cylinder but when I did that I, I realized you know there's an opportunity to add a little bit more weight I could solder on a little brass bar as sort of a trim piece all the way all along there so I may do that I'm going to consider that tomorrow I think tonight I'm just going to trim off these end pieces and um, kind of come up with the finished product. And then the only other thing will be, you know, fastening them together and probably using solder and then bolting it through the, um, the frame, the end, 
and bumper parts there. So pretty excited about how that's come out because I think the valence part will look pretty cool. I'll try to take some pictures in the sunlight tomorrow and show you a little bit more about that. Here's the completed sub-assembly for the left hand side. I've got it in the vise and I've drilled and tapped some number 348 holes just to keep it in place now and I'll be able to drill and tap and fix it to the locomotive using these things, uh, these holes here, actually the ones in board and um, that will also be handy for soft soldering the pieces together. Okay, now I've got the um, footboards and valences clamped in place and I drilled a number 46 hole with my Dremel. There's kind of a tight clearance with the brake stand. I could have taken that off, but oh well. Left it in place. And um, now I'm tapping a number 348 hole here in the rear. I still have yet to drill this. My plan is to drill, tap, and then replace, put the screw in place so this is held down in, in place with the actual screw. And then I'll drill and tap the side and the front and my holes will be all set and I can solder the two pieces of metal together and add a piece of decorative trim. All right so here we have it with both of the screws and this screw here just holds the top of the plate to the valence which is a thick piece of metal it's notched out to clear the cylinder chest cover there but um, and the same thing here this is the only one that goes through the rear frame section. This one holds the valence. So we've got that all set. Tomorrow I'll come in here, take these all apart, clean it, and I'm going to uh, soft solder. I will tin some sections of the plate so that I can bond them together with soft solder. And I'm also going to soft solder in a little brass rod here, probably an eighth inch brass rod as a piece of trim kind of fill that little round gap but I am pr pleased with how that looks. A change of heart here I decided I was thinking about putting little brass rods here soldering them in and I realized I don't have any brass rods that are long enough it's like over 13 inches so everything would have been 12 inches and it would have been basically the distance between this part of the valence and this one over here and that would have looked kind of odd I think. Plus, it would be kind of a waste of brass rod. So I have a bunch of eighth inch steel rod that is long enough. And I think that's what I'm going to do when I take it all apart. I'll soft solder in the, bra the uh, eighth inch steel round rod and just round off the edges. I think it'll give it a nice look there. Just wanted to point that out. So now is the time to take everything apart, clean up the insides. And as I mentioned, I'll be um, putting solder on the both sides here in you know in the inside and then joining them together I'll show you that in a minute I want to show the process of tinning the surfaces so that I can bond them with the soft solder the tinning went pretty well on this side I really haven't done anything in fact it's still got some sticky flux on it so I do need to clean this off before I try to solder the two pieces together this one, that the um, steel part, the tinning did not go well at all. I just finished sanding it with some coarse and then some 150 grit, and I got it fairly clean. But I just wanted to point out, if you ever are having a problem with solder sticking, I guarantee, especially with soft solder, it's basically, um, the problem is probably cleanliness. So I had got, I thought I got this steel pretty clean. But you can see there's still some pits there and, and I guess probably some paint residue from the bed frame material. So hopefully the flux and the heat and everything bubbled that up a little bit. I've sanded it off, I've, I've dunked it and um, wire brushed it and like I said sanded it. So I'm going to keep cleaning on this a little bit more and then I'll flux it and um, put the two pieces together and hopefully there's a pretty good layer of tin so to speak, the solder on, soft solder on, on the upper piece, but I'll lay them together like this. I'll screw them gently into position and um, then heat them up and hopefully we'll bond the two pieces together. So I'll bring you back for that, show you how it works, but cleanliness is critical. Okay, you got them nice and clean, some scrubbing, uh, sanding, wiping with uh, some acetone, 
and I'm getting ready to put some flux. It's just ordinary soft solder flux I'll put on there and then screw the two pieces. I don't think I'm going to add any extra solder. I think there's actually enough here for the two pieces and um, we'll try to heat them up and solder them together. All right, here we are with the soldered together assembly. It's kind of globbed up a little bit, not, not as artistic as I would have liked it, but I'm just going to let it, I think it's solid and I'll let it cool down and tonight take it apart tomorrow and clean it all up and see what it looks like for, uh, I'll have to obviously do a little body work and paint stuff to get it ready, but I think I got it solid. That's the main thing at this point. Okay, here is the soldered semi-finished foot plate here. Extra thick, extra heavy duty with the little steel rod soldered onto it. It's a terrible soldering job really, but it's stuck and everything seems quite solid. So in general, I'm pleased with it. From an artistic standpoint, I'm not, but I'd have filed off some of the globs and what I'm going to do, I've, I've let it soak in the pickle a little bit and just to kind of break down the flux, now I'm going to wash it with hot soapy water and let it sit overnight and I think I'll use JB Weld to fill in the rest of the gap there, kind of smooth out the seams a little bit and then I can prime and paint it. I probably won't prime and paint it just yet. We'll see. We need to make the tanks and arrange all that. But generally, I'm pleased with it. It came out okay. I'm not sure I'm going to do the same process on the other side. That's why I wanted to finish this side first. But I am pleased with the thickness and the, the heft and the additional weight that will help put on the chassis. Right, here's some JV, JB Weld that I've applied to the edge of the running board kind of where the steel rod is there it wasn't quite even how I had soft soldered it in place so that'll give it a nice finished trim appearance I'll let that dry overnight and sand it tomorrow and uh, may have to fill a spot it looks like I'm getting an air bubble there but anyway I have used the JB Weld before as a filler I used it both on my corn and the universal pillar tool which are over there it makes a nice filler material and of course it's very sturdy so we'll do that let it dry put another coat on if needed and sand and paint all right here's the starboard or right hand side i guess the engineer's side running board it's not finished yet i do need to laminate it together and to include that little piece of steel rod trim just like I have on the other side, but making the second one was a lot faster than the first one. And I just realized it's all in the shadows, so it's hard to see them out here at night, but you can see. And the nice thing is, it definitely adds some weight. Here, let me walk around to the other side here. Here's the basically completed one. I do still need to do a little body work with some JB Weld to fill in that little valley a little bit and then sand it, prime it, and paint it. So, getting ready instead of, on this one, this side, instead of so soft soldering the two halves together, I'm thinking about just JB welding them. I think I'm going to try that tonight. I'll clean the insides off and then set them up with JB weld tonight and put the rod in as well. See how that does. Alright, here's the new, newly finished and laminated with JB Weld running board, footboard, whatever you want to call it. And as you can see, I've got the eighth inch steel rod in there embedded in a bed of, of JB Weld and smoothed out over it. And this is the other one that I finished yesterday and I had to put a little touch up of the JB Weld in place to kind of fill some holes. So I'll let all this dry overnight and then we'll sand it and prime it and top coat it with some rust -oleum. I do like this Krylon primer, but it, and it's compatible with the rust -oleum top coat. Okay, here's the running boards with the JB Weld dried, and I've sanded them a bit, cleaned them off with some acetone on a rag, and I got them out here in the sunshine now, so getting ready to use the primer and the top coat. Nice thing about this Krylon primer is it dries really fast, so 
I'll shoot a coat on the uh, top and bottom and then come back with a clear coat, a clear coat, the top coat of the Rust-Oleum Black in just a minute. And of course I do always wear my mask uh, when I'm spray painting even with ordinary can spray paint. So I'll bring you back and show you what the results look like in a minute. Okay, here's the primed footboards. They came out, the primer came out really nice. I'll let it dry for like half an hour and it's fine. So now I'll shoot the top coat on, let it sit the, unfortunately for me, the Rust-Oleum is not as quite as fast drying. So what I'll do, I'm out here doing my yard work. I'll shoot the bottoms, let that dry for an hour or so, and then flip it over and shoot the tops. Okay, folks, so here we are after two coats of the Rust-Oleum Gloss Black. Not perfectly satisfied with the job that I did. I got a little anxious and I got a couple of blobs and runs. So I've let it dry for a couple of hours and shot just another dusting coat on to try to even things out. So I'll let it dry. I'll let it sit for a while before I take it inside. But overall, pretty happy with the, the, uh, the process and the results. So the next step after this, we'll be making some cool tanks, some water tanks. I'll be using brass, just like LBSC talks about, I have a good stock of brass. I may make this the last segment for this week's episode, and I just wanted to show, this is the paint I'm using. There's a little mask, I think I got it at Harbor Freight, and the last sandpaper I used on it was 220. Hope y'all have a great week. Thanks for watching.